all for coming. I'm thrilled that Mark Chester, the artist, and Olga Tavnevsky, yes, one of the participants in the project, can be here with us. They have a fascinating story about the project and Olga's experience in coming to this country. So, here they are. Welcome. Thank you very much. Now, this is 11th grade. You all on 11th grade? This is, this is, you're, you're taking photographs, right? I just want to make sure this is. Speak at the mic. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm the photographer. Uh, I, all these photographs are part of a project that I started five years ago. Uh, and the seed was planted when I was photographing. I was assigned to photograph a book by a broadcast journalist, Charles Corralt. And the essay that I had to illustrate was Ellis Island, which is in New York. Are you familiar with Ellis Island? It's the immigration station. It's the first one that, that was started here in, in the United States, in New York. And I went to Ellis Island, and there's, a, there's an introduction and photograph from the panel on that wall. And it's a very interesting essay that he wrote, because he talks about that we're all from somewhere else originally. So we can all identify with foreign born. The foreign, the population of Massachusetts is uh, around 6 million, a little more. 15% of the population is, 15% is foreign born. Did I say that right? I said that right. I've been doing this for three hours now. I should, I should have it down. So Massachusetts is a mini United Nations. And when the 2010 census came out, I thought it would be a great project to find out all the people who are foreign born and who are now residents of Massachusetts and naturalized citizens. So all the people that are in this show are naturalized US citizens and they've waited a while to become a citizen. And I was attending the naturalization ceremonies that are at Faneuil Hall, uh, JFK Library, Worcester, uh, and Worcester Mechanics Hall at the uh, uh, U.S. District Courthouse. So there's one every week somewhere in the state. And I would go to them and I would get a list of the countries of the applicants. I didn't know who they were. But this was one way of meeting people from uh, various countries. Does anyone know how many countries there are in the world? Any guesses? 196. 196 countries. So I have photographed about 190. Who said the 196? I read it in your Oh, you read it, all right. <laughs> well, and South, South Sudan was, is the newest country. And that became, that was part of Sudan. And uh, now it's a new country, South Sudan. So all the participants volunteered to be part of this project. They chose the photograph that you see on the wall. I would photograph them for about 15 minutes, either at their home, their workplace, or a community setting that they chose. And they chose the photograph that they like. And they will get a copy of this book, as well as all the schools and libraries in Massachusetts. That's part of the project. It's a, it's a uh, nonprofit pro project uh, endorsed by the Massachusetts Immigrant Refugee Advocacy Coalition, known as MIRA. And I was at a, an event of MIRA's and, uh, to meet people, and I'm in the front room, talking with people, and all of a sudden, Olga walks in. And, and then she disappeared. And I was wondering what country she was from. Uh, and so we met, and she told me she was from Uzbekistan. I said, where? 
Hi, my name is Olga Klasnitsky. Originally I'm from, as I said, Mark, and I'm from Uzbekistan, and it's a former part of USSR. I think you heard a lot about this big country. So in 1991, uh, Uzbekistan became independent, and I will show you where it's like in the world map. So you can see like that. That's here. So it's over there. It's a uh, uh, Population of 31 million people and it's 172,000 square miles. So I arrived to United States in 2001 with a very limited English knowledge, but uh, I thought I know very well. But the reality showed me I wasn't. So I started studying very hard because my goal was to get a higher education and uh, after passing the special uh, test, for English proficiency, uh, I graduated, graduated Worcester State University with double major in psychology and early child education on the top of uh, top ten of my class, and I was uh, accepted in National Honor Society of Psychology that year. And it's actually very significant for me because my first test, as I was telling in the previous talk, I was getting it was C. And all my life I was an honor student and to see C as my grade, it was like a knife in my heart. So I started to study very hard. I was reading the same chapter 20 times. I would uh, write down every single word that I didn't know in English, translate to Russian and translate back when I was uh, writing essay. So I, and I graduated. So after I graduated the college, I opened up my own business, it's actually a restaurant, and uh, you will assume it would be like Russian restaurant because I'm from Russia, but it's actually Thai. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you the small story why it happened like this when I was um, in college. So I got it. my English is not so great, and sometimes when I communicate, people don't understand what I'm saying. I need to practice a little bit. I said, okay, I need to find a job where people can tolerate my bad English and I can practice. So I found this part-time job at the local Thai restaurant. I was working uh, on Friday nights, Saturday, uh, Saturday nights there. And after one year, I got the offer from one of the cooks who came to me and he said like, uh, will you be interested to open up a restaurant with me? I said, definitely no. <laughs> because I don't have any experience in the restaurant business and basically I, I was planning to work uh, with autistic children and I already was scheduling an internship, uh, go to interviews but he was very persistent and uh, a couple years later I opened up my own Thai restaurant and uh, last year, so we were very fortunate to get uh, multiple awards and uh, I think the highlight of my professional career was uh, last year I was um, a winner of a Female Entrepreneur of the Year by a very prestigious World uh, Business Award. This was TV Awards and I went to New York City to accept this award. And besides this is my professional career, I do modeling as well. Um, I started in Russia doing my modeling and I put on hold when I moved here. But then one day I said like, you know what, it's something what I like to do. And I contacted agencies, I signed up with three agencies and now I'm working on the runways in New York City, in Boston, Miami, you name it. And that was what published in national magazines, fashion magazines. Actually tonight I have another fashion show in Boston after that presentation and um, I've been in the movies with the big Hollywood stars Mel Gibson, Sandra Bullock, America Ferreira, Ben Affleck, Tommy Lee Jones so why I'm so descriptive about my life here I just wanted to show you like how a person with even no English, no language can come here and be successful, achieve their dreams and goals so I think that you guys, like right now, at the, that point when you can make decisions for your future life and you have to know you are the only one who has power to navigate in your life and achieve your dreams.
speak, speaking of a Thai restaurant, one of the photographs that I took is of a man from Thailand who has a Thai restaurant in Boston. The photograph is around the corner over here, and uh, he actually framed his certification, his certificate, and put it on the corner of his, he put it on the counter of his restaurant. I mean, that's how proud he, he is of, of his citizenship. So this is, it's not just my project, it's everybody who's photographed. It's their project too, because without their cooperation, uh, this would not have been possible. So the, the goal is to, uh, to educate and hope to, to make you curious about the different cultures in the world, uh, values, and, and think of ourselves, and maybe we can learn something about our own culture and, and value. So uh, it's not a geopolitical project. It, it wasn't when I started out. Uh, it seems like it's becoming more one, but uh, that's uh, a discussion for another day. As a matter of fact, they're going to be a, a selection of these will be at the State House uh, November 7th <laughs> through the 18th, fourth floor gallery in the, in the State House in, in Boston. Has anyone been there? Have you visited that field trip? Yeah. So on the fourth floor, uh, there will be new, new photographs. So any questions about photography, about this project, uh, for Olga, for me, for anybody? I'm sorry? How do I get me positive? Uh, say again, I'm sorry? Be respectful and polite to everyone in this room. How many? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, Chris Waldman, who is the director, designed this with, with Arthur, helped, helped the, the two of them, hung these photographs, and you selected the photographs. Yes. That would be interesting. Why I haven't heard why you chose certain pictures over others. Would, did you want to say something about that? Um. Or no, am I putting you on the spot? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know. So many of these photographs spoke to me um, in terms of suggesting the backstory to these people's lives. Um, it just feels so rich and varied, and I was so surprised to hear that about 190 different um, nationalities are represented in Massachusetts, and that really stunned me. I mean, I think of the Northeast, as, and especially Massachusetts, as being relatively homogenous. And um, just like everywhere else in the U.S., you know, we are a country of immigrants, and I think it's just a wonderful exploration of that. Thank you for that. I'm reminded that the, the, the goal was also to, to find a, uh, a man and a woman from each country, or, or a family, to show uh, the, the genders of a particular country. And uh, Chris hung two photographs of a man from Togo, it's on this wall here, a man from Togo and a woman from Togo. And the man is, uh, the photograph is taken in his home, in his living room, and the photograph of the woman from Togo is taken at the Brockton Museum. Uh, Brockton Library, excuse me. So uh, I like to call the project Noah's Mark. <laughs> Showing a man. Yes, sir. Uh, what is, Olga, what does your sash represent? I might have missed something uh, earlier. So in 2013, I entered uh, the beauty pageant. It's a uh, um, national and actually it's uh, one of the biggest world beauty pageant. And uh, I was competing for a state of Massachusetts and I won, the, I won this pageant in, in uh, January, right? And in May I went to compete for a national crown. In California. We should say she was wearing this and her crown when she walked into the room that, where Mark met her. So, this is one of the reasons she really stood out to him. <laughs> <laughs> Mark only reacts to the crowns. <laughs> of some sort. Um, I'm doing a, a project called uh, Let Me Sleep On It. And they're photographs of people sleeping in public. 
<laughs> and it's interesting, I mean, if you've ever noticed people sleeping in public, how they can contort their body and somehow take a, take a snooze and actually, and, and be outside and be, uh, and feel comfortable just falling asleep and finding their own world. So that's, that's one project. So I have a lot of photographs and then I'm just inspired by maybe a news event. That's how I get ideas, or just walking around and a theme comes to mind. Yes? Do you often do these portraits or do you have other types of photography? No, I don't do portraits per se. I, I do uh, what you call street photography and it's just, uh, I travel a lot. I've been traveling around the world without leaving the state for this particular project. But prior to moving uh, back to Massachusetts, I went to high school in Springfield, Massachusetts. And after high school, I went to the University of Arizona in Tucson. And from there, I just kind of traveled. I lived in New York, and then I moved to California. And in California, I traveled a great deal. Uh, I was a, uh, a correspondent for a travel trade publication, which allowed me to travel to all these countries. So I'm kind of I've come full circle coming back here and traveling the world without leaving the state. So many of the people that I have met uh, are countries that I have visited, but also that I've never been to before. So, questions, any other? Yes? I have a sense that this project's been going on for a while, so it keeps going. Uh, it, it's, um, it's been five years. But I, just recently, I photographed two countries that I was looking for for the longest time, Oman and Bahrain. Do you know where that Oman Bahrain is? Anyone want to guess? Yes. Uh, the the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Uh, yes. And there's Qatar, Kuwait. There's a, a lady from Kuwait here. Uh, there's a Yemen. I don't know if there's a person from Yemen here. I don't know. Yemen is another country. So I, I've learned a lot about geography. That's for sure. And it's, it's, it's interesting. Yes? Um, can you talk a little bit, in the last talk, you talked a little bit more about your encounters with your subjects. How you make them more specifically how you um, find out who these people are and um, how you get them. How you, how you get them to agree to a Well, you know, it's just straightforward. Uh, when I go to the uh, ceremonies, uh, I shave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I dress nicely, that, that, that I, I try to be respectable looking because I'm respecting what they're going through. And if I recommend that everyone go to a naturalization ceremony because it's a very moving experience, something that we take for granted. But when you go to one of these, and then the judge says, congratulations, you are now an American. It's really something. You may not think it is, but it really is something to, to hear that. So uh, I, when I'm at these ceremonies, I, as I mentioned, that I get the country list. I don't know who the person is. Did I go through with this? Or, no. I, I don't know who the person is. and. Uh, I meet them, maybe the, the field agent at the, uh, at the ceremony will, will uh, ask if there's anyone from Bahrain and uh, then will introduce me and then I tell them what the project is and it's completely voluntary and um, I'm, it's, it's, it's almost a very soft sell in a, in a way because I mean it's, it's a private matter to, to take a picture of someone. But I've been very fortunate that uh, maybe maybe Olga can address that uh, when I asked when I uh, asked you uh, I want to explain yes. to you what I was yes. doing and, and you said what yes. <laughs> so basically like I crashed in the wrong party and it was in the same room the same room the Plaza Plaza yeah and there was like two events going on and I was supposed to be for an event of uh, Alice Fund I don't know if you're familiar with that it's a breast cancer foundation it's very big. Uh, foundation almost like the end of anywhere. So when I went to the event in another room where Mark was, so I was walking around and someone came to me and said, I think that you're in the wrong place. I said, is it the Alice Font event? He said, no, it's across the room and I just found it because you to like dressed up for our event because it was for immigration um, 
center. So I went there and Mark started following me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, another stalker. <laughs> So Mark and he asked me uh, uh, where I'm from, I explained to him and he said, oh, I don't have a person from Uzbekistan actually, can I take a picture of you? So, and because I do modeling, I'm very cautious about this kind of things and like um, why, so I started asking, he told me about his project and actually he had a special like uh, official letter from I, Mira. I have a letter uh, from Mira that, is, that gives the project credibility, so I yeah. have, I have I have something that says who I am. Yeah, so he gave me a demo then, so like same. <laughs> so I said, okay, I cannot resist that letter. <laughs> so this is how it happened. And of course, and, uh, I was uh, researching and studying uh, Mark's uh, uh, professional career, and it was incredible and amazing. And actually, it's uh, my honor to be photographed by him. And, uh, yes. Well, Mark, I, I also know that you've been known to pull up next to someone in the car and see them and uh, somehow get them in a conversation about where they Yes, are. this happened. I was uh, in East Boston photographing um, a gentleman from Costa Rica and I was heading back uh, to the Cape and I came to a red light by the airport and there was a fellow in the cab and I looked at him, he looked at me, I rolled down the window and he rolled down the window I said, where are you from? And he said, the Congo. I said, I need to talk to you. <laughs> and he wrote down his telephone number, got out of the, got out of the cab, and gave me his telephone, and, and then we, we, uh, we connected, and I went to Native to photograph him. I don't know if that picture is here. It's, it's, it's in the book. <laughs> and when I'm in a restaurant with Mark, he's always asking people, where are you from? <laughs> well, a little more subtle than that. I mean, it's, uh, you, know, you, know, you don't want to too much. So uh, actually, I don't know what the profession of any of these these people are. Oh, here's the uh, the, the photograph of the Thai uh, with his certificate right here. It's not around the corner. It's right here between these two ladies, girls. Um, uh, yes, I just meet them by chance. It's it's uh, it's wonderful. It's meant to be, I suppose. Mark, you should also mention the exhibit that's up on the skywalk. Oh yes. Uh, the Skywalk, which is on the 50th floor of the Prudential Building, uh, it's a, uh, what would you call it? It's, a, it's, a, it's an immigration museum. Yeah, it's the um, Immigrant Museum. Immigrant Museum, and uh, they have a touch screen of the world, and you touch the, the continent, and then the countries will light up, and then if you press the country, a photograph of mine will show you that particular person from that country with some facts about uh, the population of uh, that country here in the United States and in Boston. So, so a lot of the a lot of these are, are in that project in, in that uh, exhibit. Yes, thank you for a little fact. So uh, I mentioned it's going to be in the State House. Uh, it's going to be at. Uh, Kingston Library, uh, the library in um, Gloucester. Uh, it's in the Great Barrington Library. So uh, we've been circulating these, a selection of photographs all over this state in various uh, venues, uh, art centers such as this, and uh, in uh, uh, libraries and in City Hall. So that would be an interesting um, venue for, for your class. You know, do a, come up with a theme. Uh, mine was in the uh, Mayor's Neighborhood Gallery. There are three different galleries. Uh, do you know about that? No, I don't. Yeah, check out the uh, Boston City Libraries. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Olga, I want to ask you a question about immigration. I think all of us have some experience with immigration because except for Native peoples, Native Americans, all of us are here because some of them are great. Right. And I think we've all heard stories mm -hmm. about the old country from our own. There's some of us have visited and seen life there. But I have a sense that 
uh, we, in the American context, are very separate from mm -hmm. the places that we came from. Mm -hmm. uh, and as someone who's made the transition recently, do you have any observations about maybe what life is like in Uzbekistan that people here don't mm -hmm. find easy to understand, or even generally what Americans whose families are from various places don't really see about the places that their families are from? Yeah. Um, so I would like to say that uh, I actually came from the family of immigrants as well. Uh, my great parents, they were moving to Soviet Union during uh, World War I. Uh, they assimilated uh, in Soviet Union, so I'm like four generation of Russian Koreans. And uh, with years we lost all the Korean culture, language, everything, so my native language is Russian. And whole, but I look like Asian. So basically whole my childhood, my teenage uh, age, like I was wondering who am I? Am I a Korean or I'm a Russian? And um, I was granted a scholarship to study in South Korea for one year and I thought like this will be like a wonderful experience for me to go and to see my historical roots, uh, uh, to learn about my cultural traditions. So when I arrived to Seoul, to South Korea, I was studying at the University for Foreign Koreans and this whole year was great experience for me in the sense like I just figure out that my mental state is that I'm Russian. I just look outside like Korean. And they were not very receptive. They were not like accepting me because they couldn't understand why I don't speak proper Korean language, why I have this uh, weird accent, the way I'm talking. So when I um, actually like I travel a lot to different countries like Turkey, uh, others and uh, I just figure out every time I would go there and I would imagine what my life would be if I would move here to live and I just knew it's no way I can do anything there because I felt like how close there all doors for me as a foreigner I have to like live maybe 30 40 years to make one milestone there and be accepted by society but when I arrived here it just was amazing, amazing experience and all my relatives back in Russia, they told me like, oh, if you don't like in America, you always can come back here, so don't worry about it, don't be afraid. So when I got here, I actually like, any day I was missing my home. <laughs> I was so busy with my school, with everything, and all these opportunities that came to me over here, it just... Uh, was unbelievable and I couldn't believe like how many doors were open for me here. So and it became like my second home actually like five years ago it was interesting another my observation. I went back to Uzbekistan for a week and on the third day and I was like, oh I didn't see my relatives, my friends, it will be so fun and it's only one week, a short period of time, but on the third day I just wanna leave. <laughs> I just couldn't wait and like go oh, with my Flight and to come back here, so it actually became my second home here. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I welcome you to the reception that will be going on till one o'clock, and uh, you're welcome to ask Mark and Olga other questions. Thank you. Thank you for coming.